This is 5 Minute Friday on Multi-Agent Systems. Welcome back to the Super Data Science Podcast. I'm your host, John Crone. As we're in the habit of doing most Fridays now, let's start things off with a couple of reviews. Our first today is a five-star review from Apple Podcasts that is by Nathaniel Brewer, who's a CTO in Charlottesville, North Carolina. And Nate very generously titled his Apple podcast review, Greatest AI Podcast. Terrifically kind of you to say, Nate. Thank you. Uh, The body includes some detail on why he thinks uh, this show is the greatest AI podcast. So he said, uh, as someone who is in the AI field with limited people to talk to in the field, this podcast is food for thought. John has the greatest guests with really awesome topics. If you're looking to stay up to date with AI, this is the podcast. All right. Thank you, Nate. Uh, Our second review comes from Sei Adiko, who is a healthcare analyst in Nigeria. Sei says, your podcast was a top resource through my master's program in applied AI and data science and continues to inspire and keep me abreast of the possibilities of data science. So happy to hear it, Sei. I hope we can continue to inspire you. Thanks for all the recent ratings and feedback on wherever you listen to your podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other podcasting platforms out there as well as for likes and comments that you provide on our YouTube videos. Apple podcast reviews in particular are especially helpful to us because they allow us to, uh, they allow you, sorry, to leave written feedback if you want to. And that allows me to keep a close eye on the reviews. And if you leave one, I'll be sure to read it on air like I did uh, the couple of reviews that we had today. All right, let's get into the meat of this episode, which is focused on groundbreaking multi-agent systems and how these multi-agent systems are transforming the way AI models collaborate to tackle complex challenges. For a bit of timely, high-profile context, two weeks ago, OpenAI unveiled its latest model, GPT-4.0. Miro Murati, the company's chief technology officer, hailed it as the future of interaction between ourselves and the machines. What sets GPT-4.0 apart is its ability to engage in expressive, human-like conversation with users in real time. So you can now speak to a state-of-the-art LLM that not only understands your words, but is now also engineered to respond in a natural, intuitive way. This isn't so much an LLM innovation as a stitching together of an LLM with existing tech, but in terms of usability, it's an awesome step forward for some in the direction of the famous Spike Jones AI film, Her. Not to be outdone by OpenAI, Google DeepMind head Demis Hasebis showcased Project Astra just a day after the GPT-4.0 release. This early version of Project Astra is what Hasebis describes as the company's endeavor to develop universal AI agents that can be helpful in everyday life. And this marks another significant step forward in the AI revolution. You can check out the link in the show notes to see demos of the Project Astra agent being used via Google Pixel phones or prototype glasses that aim to build on the ultimately floppy release of Google Glass a decade ago. Anyway, regardless of the implement, um, Project Astra was shown in these demos to be able to analyze real-time video in order to explain physics, literature, and landmarks, even to be able to solve math problems on a whiteboard. It was very cool to see. These launches, uh, so things like GPT-4.0 and Project Astra, are part of a larger trend across the tech industry to create chatbots and AI products that are more useful and engaging to users and more useful in a wider range of situations. So if you show GPT-4.0 or Astra pictures or videos of art or food that you enjoy, they can provide you in real time with a list of museums, galleries, and restaurants, say, tailored to your preferences and answer questions about the food or the art or whatever. As impressive as these agents are, however, they still have plenty of limitations when it comes to executing complex tasks. For example, if you ask today's LLMs to plan your trip to Berlin based on your leisure preferences and your budget, including asking it to provide you attractions to see, what order to see them in, and ask it to actually buy you tickets to, to these attractions, appropriate train tickets to get you there, you're likely to be disappointed. But this is where multi-agent systems come into play. By enabling LLMs to work together, researchers are unlocking new possibilities for AI to perform intricate jobs. 
Recent experiments, for example, have shown that teams of LLMs in a multi-agent system can assign each other tasks, build upon one another's work, and even engage in deliberation to find solutions that would be out of reach of any single LLM. And all of this happens without the need for constant human direction in the loop. In one remarkable example from DARPA, a team of three agents named Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie worked together to find and defuse virtual bombs. Alpha took the lead, instructing its partners, Bravo and Charlie, on what to do next, resulting in a more efficient problem-solving process. Critically, this emergent behavior between Alpha, Bravo, and Charlie wasn't explicitly programmed, but rather was a result of the agent's collaboration. Cool, right? Uh, in another example, researchers at MIT have also demonstrated that two chatbots in dialogue perform better at solving math problems than a single agent. By feeding each other's proposed solutions and updating their answers based on their partner's work, the agents were more likely to converge on the correct answer. In other potential real-world examples of this kind of dialogue, this kind of debate between agents could potentially be applied to, say, things like medical consultations or peer review feedback on academic papers. It could even be used to fine tune LLMs themselves, um, you know, therefore limiting the need for humans to be labeling data with processes like RLHF. Anyway, uh, the power of multi-agent systems lies in the ability of these systems to split jobs into smaller specialized tasks with each agent possessing distinct skills and roles. At Microsoft Research, for example, a team of humans created a software writing multi-agent system consisting of a commander that delegates subtasks, a writer that writes the code, and a safeguard agent that reviews the code for security flaws. This approach of having these different specialized characters, a commander, a writer, a safeguard, has resulted in code being written three times faster than with a single agent without sacrificing accuracy. Cool, so some really great examples there. However, um, with as with any AI advances, there are potential downsides to multi-agent systems as well. So LLMs can sometimes generate illogical solutions, and in a multi-agent system, these so-called hallucinations can cascade through the entire team. Agents have also been known to occasionally get stuck in loops, for example, by repeatedly bidding each other farewell without breaking free from that loop. Despite these challenges, the commercial interest in AI teams is growing. Microsoft's CEO Satya Nadella has emphasized the importance of AI agents' ability to converse and coordinate, and the company has released Autogen, an open source framework for building LLM-based multi-agent systems. Other frameworks like Camel offer no-code functionality, allowing users without any coding ability to input tasks in plain English and watch the agents get right to work. I've got links to both of these projects, Microsoft's Autogen and Camel, for you to check out in the show notes. As multi-agent system technology advances, like any AI advances, yeah, yeah, there are, of course, potential risks. Malicious actors could exploit these systems by conditioning agents with dark personality traits, enabling them to bypass safety mechanisms and carry out harmful tasks. The same techniques used for multi-agent collaboration could be used to attack commercial LLMs through jailbreaking or do all kinds of other nefarious things. Hopefully, however, the positive applications of multi-agent systems end up greatly overwhelming the negative ones, including by us doing research, by people like you potentially doing research on systems for defending against multi-agent system misuse. Yeah, so assuming we can contain the negative effects, this is very exciting indeed. And there are truly limitless applications for multi-agent systems out there. Um, what in your industry could be automated or improved by multi-agent systems where, say, single LLM approaches aren't sufficiently effective? Check out the links in the show notes to get started on experimenting with multi-agent systems today. All right, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoyed it or you know someone who might, Consider sharing this episode with them. Leave a review of the show on your favorite podcasting platform. Tag me in a LinkedIn or Twitter post with your thoughts. I will respond to those. Or if you haven't already, of course, be sure to subscribe to the show. Most importantly, however, we hope you'll just keep on listening. Until next time, keep on rocking it out there. And I'm looking forward to enjoying another round of the Super Data Science Podcast with you very soon.